Gather around, kids. It's time we had the talk. What talk am I talking about? You are young. You're under the age of 30, 35. You have these moving clouds and shadows and fibers and strands and clouds and things in your vision, and it's driving you a little crazy. You've probably been to one or two or three doctors. Uh, you've been dilated. They've taken a look in your eye, and they've all told you the same thing. Your eye is healthy. Yeah. Um, um, the ret retina, retina is fine. There's no holes and tears and detachments, and, and maybe they didn't even see the floaters. But you know, you're trying to reassure you that everything's fine, and off you go. I'm Dr. James Johnson. I am the floater doctor, and uh, I'm medical director of Vitrous Floater Solutions. I have been treating eye floaters exclusively since 2007. This video is not to try to talk you into coming to my practice. In fact, it's just the opposite. I'm going to tell you that based on your age alone, without you trying to describe your floaters, you are not likely to be a candidate for treatment. So let's go over some basics. What are floaters? Well, here's an eye. This space that takes up most of the volume of the eye is called the vitreous. It is 99% water. It's mostly water with some collagen proteins in there. And ideally and normally and for most people, it is an optically transparent fluid. Uh, there are proteins in there, and for whatever reason, I have some ideas, but I can't really posit them because I can't prove it. But uh, in younger patients, some of these collagen fibers will clump together, forming fine, fine, delicate little strands. They just so happen to form very close to the retina, about one or two millimeters away from the retina. And in that location, they don't have to be big to be bothersome, they just have to be bothersome, and they are. These little fibers and strands will cast shadows onto the retina, and since this is a liquid, and there's a little bit of movement of that body of, of vitreous, there's going to be some uh, lateral translocation and sliding of those densities uh, right along the retina. So what the patient experiences is moving shadows across your vision. You look down, you look up, you look left, right, and these things kind of swirl across there. And if you're looking into computer screens all day long, you are reading, you're, uh, you're an artist, you're a pilot, I mean, I've seen it all, um, these things will drive you a little crazy. So you've been to your doctor, you've been reassured that everything is fine, you decide you're going to get on the Internet and do some searches, and you stumble across mine or maybe a couple other uh, doctors who treat floaters, and you're all excited. You're like, I'm going to get this thing taken care of definitively. Well, I'm telling you, you might be ready for a disappointment. Of all of the younger patients that I've seen and evaluated in my practice, probably about 80% of them, I just look in there and say, I can't treat that. Then maybe the 20 or 30% that I think maybe might be an exception, when I really honestly look back on that, you know, the vast majority of those still weren't very good candidates for treatment. And there might be just a little improvement, but really not very much. So it's a very frustrating and a very frustrated group of people who uh, have these, uh, this, this visual phenomenon and nobody is really offering them anything. Um, you know, what, in fact, you know, what are your treatment or management options? First option is do nothing. That's how most people are, are kind of forced by default to do nothing, suffer them. Uh, choice number two is the laser. If you're a candidate, well, you know, most of the younger patients are not. My bread and butter are those over the age of 45 and 50, and, and, and most of those older patients I can treat. Uh, the third option is a surgical procedure where they go into the eye and remove all of the vitreous. It is problematic. It is aggressive. It has its risks. And uh, many of the retina specialists who do that procedure, first of all, they're going to be very reluctant to do them on a younger patient, but they'll tell you, you can pretty much count on 100% getting a cataract from that procedure which creates a whole nother cascade of, of problems and visual dis challenges that go along with that. So, you know, there really hasn't been very much. The, the fourth, you know, I'll just kidding. The fourth is essentially all the other stuff. Uh, eye drops, systems, um, uh, supplements, uh, you know, booklets, you know, all the other stuff that you can find uh, on the internet, which, uh, you know, it, it, that's, it just doesn't work. Um, but they're there to take advantage of you, so be forewarned. Um, you know, ultimately, it just kind of comes down to uh, I have one tool in my toolbox, and I need to know what I can safely and successfully apply that tool towards. And um, unfortunately, floaters in younger patients just generally have not been a very good uh, 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 target for me to go after. Uh, if I were to fire my laser, you know, focused on that stuff right there, there's a chance that some, some energy will, will cause some collateral damage to the retina. Just can't do that. Got to keep it safe. Got to try to keep it successful. 
So, um, you know, a lot of this information is in, is in the text on the website, but uh, this kind of makes it a little bit more personal. Um, I, have, I have, lately I've just basically said I, I, I should just close my practice to the younger patients. Uh, I, I don't want to be tempted to treat somebody who's not a good candidate. Um, and just, or, 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 and I don't want to take anybody's money if I'm not delivering something of value. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a few of you that will say, yeah, but I still want an evaluation. Well, I'm not going to close my door and I'm not going to block my, my door and prevent that. Uh, but I feel better and I feel it's appropriate and I sleep better at night when I'm honest and transparent about what I do. And so if you're, you know, still want to come out here and travel from wherever you are, and you just want to have somebody who has the experience in treating floaters to take a look in there, well, I'm your guy, but I'm discouraging that. Um, so anyways, it's, 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 uh, it's not very fair, it's not right, it's, uh, it, it, but it is what it is. You know? And uh, from the moment we're born, nature's trying to break us down to dust, and you know, welcome to the beginning of it. And it's interesting, too, because I find that the younger patients are really oftentimes the most distraught, the most depressed, the most despondent, the, the really psychologically affected by this in some ways more so than the older patients, even though the older patients may have a lot more going on. And it may just be a function of, you know, when you're older, your body's kind of breaking down, you just kind of accept it a little bit more. And when you're young, it's like the first betrayal of your health. It's like the first thing to go wrong. And I think some people really do have a, a tough time with that. So I don't judge. It just is what it is. So anyways, I hope this answers your question about younger uh, floaters and uh, younger patients and their floaters and why it is that I'm a bit discouraging uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, from coming in and, and getting seen. Um, most of the other questions people have are also in my website. I will encourage you to do that. If you're older and you have uh, floaters and you made it through this video, um, you know, I'll be glad to see you. You're much, much, much more likely to be a candidate for treatment, and, uh, but it still does take an in-person evaluation here in order to do that. So anyways, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Um, I always look forward to talking to people about their floaters and even look forward to it more in treating them and making them better. So if you uh, want to make an appointment, call uh, my answering service. They can set that up for you. I'll send you confirmation and that'll get the, the ball started for you. Okay. Anyways, have a great day and I uh, look forward to talking to you later sometime.